source scan to one half parsec on screen. Weapons are max. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello and welcome to the show. Whoa, I, I turned me down instead of turning the music down. Whoopsie. As always, welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. This is number 71. How we've managed to cluster Frank our way all the way to here is, to be perfectly honest, beyond me. But it's a thing. So, anyway, joining me this week, we have Amy. Hello. We have Eugene. Hello. We have my birds in the background. <laughs> apparently. Noisy little pricks. And we have Stuart. Squawk. Squawk. Okay. Um, so, what are we talking about this week, Stuart? <laughs> oh, throw me in the deep end, white right, you? <laughs> oh, yes. No, uh, this week we're covering the uh, Batman vs Superman final trailer. Yep. Uh, and we're also covering a uh, Kickstarter, um, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles board game Kickstarter. Excellent. As well as the news and Eugene's model report. Sounds good. Yeah. Haha. Uh-huh. The door is closed. <laughs> see, see how I very, right, very, very, the trailer breakdown. very cleverly covered for me. Thank you. So I could get up and go across the room and close the door so you can't hear the birds as easily. Noisy little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> They're birds. What do you expect? Yeah. So anyway, let's go to the trailer breakdown. So, starts off we see for the first time the new bat jet. The wing bat thing. Wing. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's called the Batwing. Batwing. And it looks really trippy. Like, I saw the Lego kit for this before I actually saw the video of this, and I was like, that doesn't even... What the hell is the... Go- what? <laughs> and it's one of those designs that sort of falls into the category of, I don't think it would actually fly. To be honest, it looks like something out of, like, Halo or something. That would... <laughs> Yeah, it really does. <laughs> It would make more sense in Halo. Yeah. And then it cuts back to Alfred, who appears to be flying it remotely from the manor. Which is great, because finally Alfred isn't useless and, not do- and doing nothing for once in a Batman film. Exactly. He's not useless. I know, but the past... Like, even even the, the 90s Batman films, Alfred didn't really do much. Yeah. I thought so he was nice the to- surgery. Okay. Yeah, but besides, like, keeping him healthy... It- we know Alfred's like ex, um, ex, um, special forces and like exactly. complete badass. So it's nice to see him actually have a role. Other exactly. Than just yeah. being the only Alfred hero. that's been remotely close to interesting has been um, Gotham, Alfred. Oh yes, Pertwee's son. <laughs> yeah. He has been really, really good. Yeah, no, I, I like I like um Jeremy Irons as Alfred, sir. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, we see him playing with the controls as um, presumably Batflick gets ready to jump in and kick some ass. <laughs> yeah. We I see... love the, I love, I love the, the dialogue in it that he says. Oh yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, it's like Master Lane. Scans, re- thermal scanning reports 2,000 enemies on the third floor. Why don't I drop you off on the second? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know something. why, but that made me laugh. Yeah, and so you actually see thermal imaging. You see he's looking at at least three 30-inch monitors. Um, and he's got water flowing in the background. You see Batman jump out of the cockpit onto the front wing dearly and then smash through the bottom floor in a very, very Batman Arkham Asylum that, that, sort of look. Yeah, that's that's like very reminiscent of, the, of also the animated series as well. Exactly. Um... See all the bad guys aiming at the door, and then the floor explodes. Oh, this, this fight scene! If you, even for the intro trailer, if you just showed this fight scene in a TV spot, that would have sold me on the movie completely. Yeah. So, but you actually see Batman takes a few hits in this. Yeah. He doesn't get out of it unscathed, which is really no, 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 no. unusual for a sort of Batman portrayal because they're normally shown as 
Batman is awesome. Woo, Batman. And he just sort of but gets away with all the crazy he... shenanigans. But no, he... But boy, does he dish it out thoroughly. Oh, yeah. It, it, again, it plays just like Arkham Asylum. Yeah, I think it, that's intentional. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the feel I get from the, from this fight scene is it feels like the Arkham video games combined with, with like the animated series Batman. Yeah. And that's exactly what they needed to do to rejuvenate Batman. Not that it really... Batman needed rejuvenating, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and to is because Arkham Asylum and the the cartoon are both incredibly popular mediums for Batman. Oh yeah, probably probably your two probably your two biggest in terms of every, anything. Exactly, especially and, just because of like who's who the voices are in that. Exactly, you got the OG voice, Kevin Conroy. Then we cut to right. what appears to be the Batcave after the fight, and Batman bitching about I'm getting old, Alfred. It's getting harder <laughs> and harder to do the things. And it was, uh, that was like, not for lack of trying. Yeah. Not for lack of trying. You're too old to die young. And then he just he just sort of gives him the 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 back the bat um stare the uh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's not as good as like in the anime film where it's just like the eyes just like go really quite like shut, but it's like still really awesome. Yeah. Um, and then it then you have at least ten minutes worth of logos <laughs> always for, gotta have logos for, for a two minute trailer for 10 percent of that to be taken up by logos is pretty bad <laughs> it's dc what do you expect yeah uh we see some shots from the batman versus the bat the original superman movie well man, man of steel. steel um where we where we find out that bruce was actually metropolis yeah for whatever reason I'm guessing he was there for a conference because, considering there's a the signage behind him is actually a Wayne Enterprises tower yeah. sign. Cough, Redcon. Cough, cough. <laughs> uh, then we hear him sort of going on about how if you we perceive one percent of a threat from Superman because of how powerful he is, we need to take it sort of with absolute certainty that he is going to do the thing. So we need to try and stop it. And it's like you just said this guy is a god level guy, and your first thought is to fight him. Okay then, sure. You've got a death wish. What else is new? We see another one of the sort of the the prayer scenes where all the different people are sort of praying super, on Superman. And then we'll... I actually want I want to I want to uh, actually stop on that scene. And... Yep. Because this, if you actually look in the crowd, everyone's got like face paint, um, face paint on. Yeah, skull skull face paint, and they're that, all. Yeah, that actually reminds me of, of the animated series, um, with Joker. Yeah. Joker, um. With his his minions in the anime series, and they all had um, I wouldn't say Joker face paint, but they all had skull face paint on. Yeah. So well, I, I think this is actually more like reminiscent of um the day Mexican the celebration day of the dead. Yeah. But I'm also wondering if like that's meant to be like a little throwback to the anime um series as well. Yeah, it could quite easily be. But I, that... the first time I saw, uh, like my ma- my brain went, is that be from the anime series? So. And I hadn't mentioned that beforehand, so I want to get yeah. that out. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, and Superman looks rather awkward. He's sort of standing there like, guys, personal space, please. Like, Stop touching me! <laughs> I kill you! <laughs> Sorry, I've been watching that arc bed lately. Oh, yeah. Haven't you heard when you're super people, uh-huh. superheroes, you don't have a personal space option? Yeah. Then we see the Batmobile rocking it through a, bu- through a building for whatever reason. Looks, Come around the corner. <laughs> looks very similar to the building that he just kicked all the asses of the bad guys in. Comes flying around the corner and drifts straight into Superman. And we don't know if he hits the brakes or the accelerator before bouncing off him. Yeah, I, I want it to be really funny if he actually like hits the accelerator and tries to run him over. <laughs> <laughs> he crashes backwards into a petrol station. Quick shot of Lex Luthor and... Uh... That's meant to be Lois. Lois. Like Lois. All right, cool. I just totally mind blank. Yeah, no, Amy, Amy Adams is Lois. Um, and then you see Superman ripping the Batmobile open and Batman sort of standing up and staring at him. Then we cut to a totally different fight, I assume, where they go sort of all out on each other. Oh, yeah, when he's in the suit. When he's in the suit. The mechanized suit, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Iron Bat. The Iron Bat. <laughs> what? 
what? It is. It's, it's Iron Man Batman. So it's just Iron Bat. Um, starts pummeling the crap out of each other. Breaks the building. You see um, Clark sort of tugging at his ties if he's about to get ready. You see someone unrolling a... Is that an alpha? Yes. Yeah. Someone taking a cover of an old Bruce. alpha. It's probably Bruce. Oh yeah, it's it's. I'm guessing it's that's Bruce. the car that um. I'm guessing that's the car that he, that he uses to drive up to the party that um. Yeah. That Lex is at and stuff. So. So so do I. Then we see what looks like Superman in full clothes jumping into a bathtub, on top of Lois. Yeah. Bow chicka wow wow. Tiny little bit bow chicka wow wow. Oh please, it's bow chicka wow wow. No, he's still fully clothed. And yeah. she's oh, and that bath me. is like ridiculously full. <laughs> yeah. Then we see Lois finding out that he's Superman. Batman lobbing some gadgets at one of the guys from the fight scene at the beginning. Um, well, he's actually chucked a, a batarang at him. Yeah. If you actually slow down. It's, you a, bat- it's a batarang. Yeah. Then we but see finally batarangs. We didn't get those in the Nolans. Then you see um, Batman shooting something at Superman. Yeah, and supposedly, Super- it's, supposedly it's like a um, there's rumor, um, it's some sort of rubber ball, and that potentially could have kryptonite in it. Oh, okay. Because um, the suit is based off the um, the Dark Knight Returns um, anime uh, anime movie and, and comic book series, where in it um, it's set a lot further in the future, where Oliver's old only has one arm. And, he sh- and um, Oliver shoots uh, cry- Kryptonite in the- into Clark's face. That'll do it. But since they don't have that in this, I'm guessing that's the substitute for it. Yeah. Um, so, you see them fighting. Cuts back to random building, presumably the one that the, the big party's going on at. Uh, Batman jumping through things. Flash, bang, flash, kick. You see Iron Bat kicking Superman and getting his ass tossed. That same massive explosion again. I actually, I really love that shot. I don't know. I just think it's really beautiful. Because you, you see the shot coming, but then you just see the shock wave in front of it, like, demolishing everything. Oh, yeah. It looks really, really good. Um, you got the guys chatting at the party. Yeah, that's the first time we actually get to hear um, uh, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman talk. So. Yeah. And then you cut to Wonder Woman, sort of kamikaze charging in. I'm guessing that's on... Because we've seen Doomsday, I'm guessing that's going to be on Doomsday. Yeah. Now the question is, the shot... um, That is definitely Batman standing on the railing above the hole on the ground, isn't it? Yes. So... Yeah, that's bats on the on the top there, like yeah. perched up. Like I'm guessing he's used like um one of his um uh, grappling, grappling hooks. Gun- yeah, yeah. Grapp- grappling guns and like shot himself up onto the railing. Oh, actually, you know what? It is? He's probably shot himself up like onto the railing. Um, as he comes off the hole and then jumps down. Yeah, and that's and that starts the fight scene. Quite probably, yeah. Or is he just feeling there- short? Well, no, because there's like gun, fo- there's like bullets and firing and stuff. So. Yeah, I think they're like shooting, like they're shooting, like trying to hit him, and they and like their reflexes are really bad. Oh yeah. So. And then there's just him pummeling somebody. Oh yeah. Um, then we see some shots of the city getting destroyed from um, Bruce's perspective. The jet f- whizzing around, firing. Apparently, it has a minigun on the front of that weird ass wing thing. <laughs> Yeah. Just shooting the crap out of Superman and not a single frack is given. Oops. I accidentally jumped the timeline backwards too far. Um, then it cuts to a lady at a shop. Who, who is that meant to be? I don't... I'm not sure, actually. I'm... Let me, let me try and catch that. Uh, yeah, 151. I'm wondering if that's meant to be Martha Kent. Could be. Because something happens that causes her to drop a coffee pot. It, 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 it. Although I thought Martha Kate was already cast because she wasn't, unless they used a different person for this movie than they did Men of Steel. Oh no. What's it? My... stupid son? Let me bring up the IMDb for this. Yeah. Um, anyway. 
I'll keep going while you do that. So then we see cuts back to Iron Bat versus Superman, and Superman just sort of casually pushes him away. We see a really, really, really quick shot of um. Who the hell is that? Okay, we see a couple of really quick flash shots that are really hard to stop on. Of what looks like it could be... I don't, I don't actually know who that's meant to be. It's somebody in a red cloak that sort of looks like Batman from behind. In front of him is the ruins of a city. Oh, no, no, that is Bats. That is Bats? That is, um... That is uh, known as his nightmare outfit, and that's rumored that he's on Apocalypse, which is um, Dark Side's world. Yeah, and there's which, a giant. Which, if that's the case, this is good, then this is a really close to hell of a movie if they're gonna have Dark Side and Doomsday. Yeah. Um, then you've got the the ground is this giant unk thing. Not an unk. It's sort of a, a big sort of symbol carved in the ground, an annihilated city, and then there's stuff in the sky that's floating up there that's doing a thing and sort of fire tornadoes and all sorts of bad things. Then we've got what appears to be Batman getting arrested with flying things buzzing in around behind him. Yeah, those are Darkseid's minions, the flying aliens. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Superman doing laser eyes and sort of charging in towards probably Batman or something. Um, you see Bruce ooh. charging into a dust cloud and probably the coolest shot of them all Superman trying to clobber Batman and Batman blocking it in a single punch now looking at Superman's face I think this is just before he palms Batman flying backwards because he looks like he's hurt and he does he looks very sort of grayed out color wise so I think this is after he's caught the rubber bullet and he's sort of losing his powers yeah I think this is like the kryptonite shot um Yeah. I know, because there's no kryptonite introduced in the universe yet, it's hard to say. Well, I thought there was. Not in Man of Steel, there wasn't actually any There wasn't any kryptonite in it. I thought there was in one of the trailers, though. There's... In, in the Man of Steel, or, um, or for Batman vs Superman? Batman vs Superman. It may get introduced in the movie, but yeah. there wasn't. There's no actual pro, um, prior mention of it in Man of Steel. Yeah. So yeah, so and that's the the final sort of Batman versus Superman trailer. There are a few TV spots, but I can't really be bothered going into them. Yeah. You're not missing anything really in the in the TV spots. No. I still can't find who that chick is. <laughs> what the one dropping the coffee? Yeah. yeah. I think Dark Sun Christ minions were called as a parademon. Sound right? Pardon? Sorry, huh? missed that. I said I think Dark Side's minions are called parademons. Ah, uh, can't. You might be I right. I can't, can't remember the actual name of them off the top of my head. I think that's right. But yeah, I, have, um, I did hear that they released how long the movie's going to be. It's going to be a two and a half hour film. Yeah. So that would explain two different bad guys. Yeah, probably like probably the first half of the movie is probably going to be Batman vs Superman, and then the second half will be the yeah. team up. Exactly. I I suspect that the first I would change it the time frame what I expect slightly from that. I would have the first, probably, 20 minutes introduce Batman and what he's doing with relatively little Superman shown. Um, then the next sort of 20 minutes or 30 minutes will be establishing the fight between Bats vs. Supes and maybe even having the fight. I mean, the first, that's the first sort of 50 minutes or so done. It's about the first third. And then from there we'll have the bad guys being introduced. Um, and stuff like that. So, it's yeah. gonna be a very long movie. Exactly. Yeah, 
So I finally found the, the coffee, the person who's the coffee, and I was right, it is Martha. Ah, nice. So. So she's dropping her coffee because she saw what her son was doing. Yeah, just, just wrecking everything. I wonder if she was in, like, Metropolis at the battle then. Yeah. Or, or something else, somewhere else, or something. So. Yeah, who knows? We'll find out when we watch the movie. The That's interesting it. thing with the IMDb is that there's a few interesting uh, rumours on yeah. there. Yeah, go for it. Uh, one is Ezra Miller, who is meant to be the uh, the Flash in the um, in yeah. the movie um, movie um, universe. universe. So he's meant to also be in it, and um, confirmed or at least confirmed in the movie is going to be Jason Momoa's Aquaman. Yeah, we we knew that a long time ago. He actually mentioned it at Supernova by accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so are you excited about the the new Batman vs Superman movie and being cast as Aquaman? It's like yeah, it's really really good. We I'm going over there to do filming soon, and everyone's like, and he just sort of stops and goes. Oops. But I shouldn't be telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason. There's, Jason, also, Jason, a very, Jason. there's also another uh, rumour that potentially we could have a Barbara Gordon in the movie. Ah. That'll be interesting. Whether she'll be Oracle, whether she'll be Batgirl, doesn't say it just has rumoured Barbara Gordon. Yeah. So, anyway. Um... Now, all of the other shows, exception being Gotham, are all back from hiatus now. Oh, yeah. So, I'm sort of curious when Gotham's coming back. Uh, oh, yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't back either. Yeah, no, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't start till March. Yeah. Um, but... I know some news about that, actually. Sweet. Have to wait till the news section. Yep. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, so... Flash and Arrow have been back for a little bit, and some interesting stuff's happened over the last couple of weeks. We haven't oh. really had much of a chance to talk about it because of Deadpool. <laughs> but... Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. <laughs> Has the past few episodes for Flash and Arrow been very interesting? So, wh who do you think the Mask Man is? I have a... Oh, this... I have a very, very far-fetched... Um theory on this. Yeah. I think it's a clone of Jay Garrick. I think it's a clone of Jay Garrick. I think what was happening before, um, when, when Jay was the Flash is that he was trying to find ways to increase his speed so he was making clones to try and harvest their speed. And I think that could potentially be what Zoom is. An yeah. out of control clone that's gone so much speed that no one can stop it. Yeah, that's that's an interesting twist. There's another. There's another. Yeah. There's another one that's also very plausible as well. Is that the is that the man in mask is the real Jay Garrick? Yeah. And the the one that's been on Earth one is actually Earth three Jay Garrick. Which then lead to a crisis on the infinite infinite Earth sort yeah. of deal. Yeah. I mean, someone got too big for their britches. Yeah. Which may, which if that is a 3J, then they could potentially leave that open to Zoom has come through from a different Earth again, and could be, yeah, clustery, clustery, clustery. Yeah. So. yeah I, I do think that the guy behind the mask is somehow tied to Jay Garrett. Oh, yeah, no, no that's, but, that's, that's not, that's not the diable at this stage. He knows who Jay is. Yeah. So, and the, uh, the whole... Seriously, why the hell would you stand next to it? Just, just, it's closing! Yay! We know Zoom is, like, right fucking behind me. So, I'm gonna stand here and wait for it to close with my back toe to it. It's like, no, move away, be anywhere but where you are. Just, just, no. Don't worry, it won't be the last time they go. <laughs> Don't worry, they'll be going back. Oh, I know. Um, one of the things that I expect to happen, which would be really really cool is you know how he used the speed for a, what's it called zoom speed. zoom eight or something eight something. oh velocity nine that's it velocity nine um you know how he used velocity seven killed all his powers yeah that would be a good trick to use against zoom 
give him a temporary speed boost that ultimately results in him not being able to speed force anymore. Might work. It worked. It ended badly for the first couple of minutes after he gets even faster, but... So. I'm thinking... I'm thinking Zoom is probably Wally West in, in, on Earth 2. There's a theory about that as well. Yeah. Like there's a few theories flying about it for who Zoom is. One is it's Wally or it's um, Barry's dad. Hey, it could be a grandkid. It'd be cool if it was Barry's dad. I think, uh, I think it'd be really awesome if it was Barry's dad, just, just because we all know who the actor was. Yeah, he was originally The Flash. So it'd be, it'd be cool. It'd be cool him donning a, a speed suit one last time as a as a nice homage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or even if he's Earth Three Flash, just Earth Three is running a little bit further ahead, and he plays Old Barry. That would be like, but you're my dad. No, I'm you from twenty years in the future. No, just no. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. And then let's and then let's talk about Arrow. Ooh. So, oh. So Malcolm dobbed in the sun, and now the son is playing with the daughter. Scumbag. So, and did you hear what he said? He's going to be staying with us for a while because he can't stay with his mum. Yeah, did they kill the mum off? So... Is it the mum in the grave the whole time and we're wrong? Uh, might be. I still well, think I it's the, the sun. The, the, um, the, uh, the, they, release a l they always release little trailers for the episode this week. Yeah. The episode for this week is Oliver Tells Felicity about... The, about um, the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Vixen. Cannot wait for Vixen. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, Vixen um is an, is was a, is started was uh, words. <laughs> yeah, Vixen um Vixen in is... this universe has already had a little mini series online as an animated series. Yeah, it's really good. The premise for her powers is she's got this talisman that allows her to tap into the spirit of any animal she needs to do a thing. So if she needs to jump really high, she sort of connects with a kangaroo or a frog or some shit. Spider. And goes. Spider. Whee! Off into the distance. If she wants to blend into a building, she uses the chameleon and then whoo, instantly becomes invisible. Relatively speaking. So, yeah, no, uh, she really wants, she to, wants to become strong, she taps into an elephant and sends Oliver flying. It was really funny because you see the Flash and um, Arrow in this animated series try to catch up to her. <laughs> and oh, that Barry was just funny. can't catch her. <laughs> Bar Barry would go up a building. By the time he gets to the top of the building, she's jumping to the next building. So he goes down and then across and then up the next one. She's already on to the next building after that. And he's just like, oh, for the love of crap. <laughs> yeah, her character was also in the Justice League Unlimited cartoons and was voiced by Gina Torres. Yep. And. And it was so well played, they were like, um, we can't exactly get rid of this character. No, it's a really awesome character, so. so yeah. yeah. And, I'm re I, uh, and I have seen the animated series, I'm really, really happy that they're doing a, a live-action crossover now. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that now. I, I, yeah. See, I still think Arrow and Flash are far from the best TV shows around. Like, they're, relatively speaking, fairly average. But they're consistently average. They're not like other shit TV shows that start at average and work their way down. If you know what I mean. Mm. They weren't bad when they first started. There's just a grind at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do kind of miss the villain of the week sort of thing. But I'm glad that they've gone to sort of over sort of overreaching sort of story arcs. Well, Flash this week is going back to Villain of the Week sort of style, because they're going to do uh, King Shark. So, that was that giant shark dude that... Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he that... was in an earlier episode of um, an Attack Fairy, and now he's back. Yeah, yeah, it's the episode where they introduced uh, Earth to Wells. So, yeah. Is that why everyone keeps whinging that Batman doesn't have shark repellent? 
<laughs> it's actually cool because they're actually doing because um Diggle and um Lila from Ar uh, from Arrow are actually going to pop into the episode because he's actually escaped from the Argus facility. So. Oh, okay, sweet. So little, little, little bit, cr little bit of crossover. Yeah, I'm wondering if Legends of Tomorrow is going to sort of morph into a sort of a Justice Leaguey sort of series. Uh, not sure at this stage. Yeah, I'm, too I'm, early I'm, to say. I'm still very sort of yeah about Legends of Tomorrow. It seems like I'm looking forward to this week's episode actually. Yeah, but it seems like it's relatively directionless. Like it's sort of all over the place. Oh, that's time travel for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially with Brits. Yeah, British time travel. Just can't seem to go where you want to go. But yeah, the reason why I'm looking forward to this episode this week is the crash land in the future. Yeah. So we get a look at old old Oliver and um Connor Hawk. Yeah. So the the kid in the arrow gear, who was that? That is Connor Hawk. I just said that's Connor Hawk. Yeah. Uh, Connor Hawk is the son of Oliver and his college girlfriend, um, Sandra. So, isn't that the one that we suspected died? Yes. Well, no, different person. Different. To be fair, Oliver, Oliver was sleeping around a lot back in the day, so. Yeah, fair point. He didn't know how to keep him in the pants. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> He was in his twenties. What do you expect? I'm not commenting that one. <laughs> hey, ladies! I'm a billionaire. Do you want to come play with my fun stick? Who hasn't been there, Oliver? Ah, uh, you. You want to join in? <laughs> <laughs> well, then again, Bruce Wayne's just bad. Yeah, you want to know my oh, secret geez. identity? <laughs> Jeez. <sighs> hey, I'm Bruce Wayne. Did you know I'm Batman? Yeah, come over here. You know you want to. <laughs> I find it, I find it more hilarious that Bruce got drugged to have a kid. <laughs> yeah, true. <sighs> Poor Damien. He has yeah. so many mental issues. Well, then again, being raised as an assassin doesn't help. Yeah, being the being the grandson of Ray Al Ghul. Yeah. So anyway. So let's circle back to Flash. <laughs> so, Zoom. Who do we think Zoom is? Uh, <laughs> Could be anyone. I'm staying with wow. I'm staying with Wally. I'm gonna go Barry's oh, dad. I really just Barry's I would dad? love to see the shock when he takes off the mask and he just sees his dad. The shock on his face would be brilliant. Oh yeah. A grandson? So or you... Bart. No, pass that. Past that. So sort There's of like a grandson. So sort of like a reverse flash, but not. Yeah. No, so, so effectively a speedster from the future. Which is Bart. Yeah. No, um, yes. The one before that. Fine, the son of. No. Anyway. Point is. So, what about you, Eugene? What do you think? I still think it's Wally. You still think it's Wally? Sweet. Yep. Okay, moving on to Man in the Box with the mask. Who is Box Man? Oh, I, don't, I really don't know. I suspect it's Diggle. It's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not anyone black. Because you actually, if you actually, um, slow down the, if you actually, like, freeze frame it, you actually see the hands are white and he actually has blonde hair ah, at the well, back. So, that, count that out. That narrows the list down a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's someone with white and blonde hair, which is obviously leaning towards Jay. Yeah. It's either Jay or, or potentially could be Earth 2 Barry's dad. Yeah. Uh, there's a few, still a few maybes, so. But Barry's dad gets around? Yeah. Well, it's more of a case of who would know the the prisoner knocky bullshit. The Joker. Joker. <laughs> Just stop. No, 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 no. She's onto something. I know who it is. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching. Just say it. 
<laughs> no, it's um, what's his face from Gotham? Jerome. <laughs> oh, I. Come on, that'd be funny. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's it's Riddler from Gotham, and he's bleach blonde his hair. Oh. <laughs> I actually would love to actually get to meet him. I think it'd be funny to meet. Uh, no pun intended. So, um, okay, we we stand by our original predictions for the grave. No point going there. Um, so anyway, that about covers Arrow and Flash. So let's do the model report. For this week's model report, we're going to cover Atlantis models. Atlantis Models is a smaller model company. They put out a, out, they were put out originally some animal kits and a few other miscellaneous kits. But right now, the niche market that they, they've moved into is they've done a lot of flying saucers. Uh, they've done a few from a couple different films and so forth. They did the flying saucer from the old film Earth versus the Flying Saucers. And there's two versions of that. There's an opaque white version. And then... Did the call just drop? No. Oh, okay. They did an opaque version and they're doing a silver version. Ooh, silver. Shiny. Uh-huh. Uh, both of them include uh, the option to put them in flight with the little laser cannon down, or you can put them landed with uh, the little door open. Um, they're about four to five inch diameter kits. They retail for about 20 bucks. That's, that's pretty good. They, they also have the model, they've reissued the old model kit from the Invaders. Uh, that's just a straight reissue from what I understand. And there is some optional clear parts that you can purchase separately for lighting or whatever you wish to do with the kit. And the newest reissue they did is they got their hands on the old Ravel Flash Gordon model kit. This is the one that goes back to the original Flash Gordon. He's wearing a very old style um, space suit and comes with one of the little green aliens with the antenna. Nice. Uh, that kit is a limited edition kit. I don't know how limited edition, but I do know it is limited edition and it is out now. So um, grab it while it's there before it's gone. Exactly. Uh, that one comes with the two little bases, one for Flash and one for the Martian. I think it's a one sixth or one ninth scale kit, and the retail's about forty dollars US. <clears throat> um, but if you're interested in flying saucers, definitely take a look at the other kits that um, Atlantis has out. Because there's quite a few of them that they do. A lot of them include little, little uh, boards for to light them up with, you know, little flashing and circle running lights and so forth. Nice. And then a lot of them are really inexpensive too. And this report's brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Okay. Uh, Stuart. Do the news, and then afterwards we'll talk about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles board game. Yep. Two dropped. Wow, really? <laughs> ah, wait, he was just at it. <laughs> oh, Stuart's back. Let's just... Stuart, you there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I think. <laughs> I was like, Stuart, it's time to do the news, and then, do whoop, you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to do the news? Uh... Yes, I do. I do. Well, Cyclone Amy has arrived. Sorry, my dogs are barking. 
So yeah, uh, we'll start with the, the sad news first. And, uh, the, uh, uh Harper Lee, the author of To Kill a Mockingbird, passed away. Last week. Oh, a sad face. Again, incredible book. And, uh... Oh, am I okay? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, a musician, uh, Paul Gordon, he did the music... And this one's a bit more dear to me, is, um... Uh, he, he did the vo he did the music for, um, all of the original Digimon. Aww. So... And, uh, Power Rangers Wild, Wild Force. Wild Force, yeah. He also did, a he was also done... Also did, a soundtrack for Transformers Robots in Disguise as well, so... Yeah. Aww. It's like that kind of hit home for me. It's like, oh no, my childhood. Yeah, right in the, right in the childhood. Right in the childhood. We're in that age group where people from right in the childhood are sort of 20, 30, 40 years older than us. So that's about the time when they start dropping off. So Yeah. And now let's move on to the awesome cool news. And Nintendo got two major milestones happening this week. Yep. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Legend of Zelda franchise turned 30 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Make me feel old, and I'm only 25. It makes me feel old, and I'm only 29. <laughs> and Pokemon turns 20 this Saturday. It makes me feel even older somehow. <laughs> it's like, wow, Pokemon's almost legal. Yeah. Legal to drink, anyway. Legal oh. to do everything. Yeah. So. this country. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said 20, 21's legal to drink in America, but it's like, technically it's 18 here. Which is one of the reasons why Americans always go on holiday here. Especially the teenagers. So, but anyway, so, Stuart, back on the note of Pokemon turning 20. If you had to choose one Pokemon to live with for the rest of your life, as your pet, who would it be? Oh, that's easy. Trico. Trico? Trico from Generation 3. That's why I don't know it. I don't know Generation 1 and 2. The rest of them are... I just... Yeah. <laughs> there are, what, 700 of the damn things now? Yeah, he's a, he's a little grass lizard. Little grass lizard. Is that the one that has the, the leaf on the back of its head? Or am I thinking of something else? No, that's Chikorita. No, no, that's no, no, Gen no. That's I know that's Chikorita. The, no, no, that's not what I mean. I think the one I'm thinking of is an electric one. Don't. Why would an electric one have a leaf on its head? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I'm confused. This little quadrupedy looking thing with this sort of green you know eye you, thing. Just Google Trico. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Well, Internet, I'm gonna, don't I'm break. I'm going to move along to Agents of Shield news. I'm going to actually be Eevee. Yours is Eevee? Yeah. Yeah. Oi. Mine would be uh, probably Bulbasaur. Or Pikachu. I'm so glad you didn't say Pikachu. I was going to say, or Pikachu. Oh, Trico, the frog thing. I'm with you. <laughs> it's not a frog. It's a frog thing. It evolves into a giant frigging lizard that has leaf blades. Oh, that thing. I'm with you. See, I haven't played that generation in, like, forever. It's my favourite generation, so. so. As much as, I, I'll admit, I cannot stand the TV show. Yeah. With a passion, I cannot stand a TV show. Yeah, uh... Do, this... I will live play the crap out of the video games. Oh, games. yeah. Well, I'm the only thing I can remember from the TV show is when I was a kid, watching the episode where he let Butterfree go free, that, oh. <laughs> that, that was, like, the saddest thing in the universe. Alright, let's move along to Ace of S.H.I.E.L.D. No, let's keep talking about Pokemon, damn it. I haven't finished talking about Pokemon. <laughs> Fine. We'll talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. later. So. You know, you can actually get things... To... Um, extra Pokemon to put on your games at the moment. Yeah, they did Mew last month, or this month? This month. Uh, this month is Mew, last month was something else. But yeah, every month they're doing a different, old, hard to get your hands on, rare Pokemon from older gens. Uh, no, the first one wasn't. It was Hoopla. Oh, okay. The hey, newest no, movie. It was like very recent, so... Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, the, I know Mew is impossible to get without codes. Um... But one of the guys that I know has been playing Pokemon since day one. He bought the first Pokemon games, both of them, 
within a week of their release and filled the Pokedex up. And he actually owned, between the two games, one of everything at every sort of evolution stage. And every time a new generation game came out, he would trade them up <laughs> to the next gen. So his current version of the game on 3DS, um, whatever the last one was that was released, I can't remember, has... That was X and Y? Yeah. Has all of his original Gen 1 Pokemon traded up to that point. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is witchcraft. <laughs> it's, um, it's actually uh, really cool. Um, Sp uh, Splatoon, which is owned by Nintendo, uh, they have they have a thing every week, um Sailor weekend is called Splat Fests. Yeah. Which is where they pit uh, one thing against another and they always like go together. Yeah. The past weekend it was Pokemon Red versus Pokemon Blue. <laughs> as as a, as a as a tribute to uh twenty years of Pokemon. Yeah. And I can tell you that Pokemon Blue won. Yeah. Pokemon Blue is the one that I had. I've still actually got that Pokemon Blue somewhere. It's the first game I got. Um and I remember because the do you know the missing no glitch Pokemon on the coast of the island? Oh, God. You know how it used to always have those two ridiculously high-level Pokemon spawn with it? Yep. Mine were Alakazam. That oh, God. Used... Alakazam Gen 1 was just dirty. Like, 220? And Mewtwo. Seriously, so, no... so what I used to do is I used to get the... Edit. This is a hilarious trick that I found. You do the rare candy bullshit. And then, if I rare candied the Mewtwo up, and it reached the point where it defaults back to level 1, its stats would stay the same. Yeah. So, I would take my Mewtwo, because the Mewtwo would start off at, like, level up, like, 190 or something fucking ridiculous. I'd take it the whole way through, loop it through, and get it back up to level 100 again, and it would be, like, 600, 700, 500, and 700... Something like that. It was all like the six, seven hundreds for the, for the stats. It was like broken as fuck. It's the sort of thing where you set it into battle and the other guy just dies from sheer awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that Mewtwo. And the other week, I was down visiting my brother. He's got our old Nintendo sixty four with the Pokemon Stadium on it. Um, it actually had transferred onto it that Mewtwo. And I remember we could never play Pokemon Stadium with that Mewtwo because it was so broken it would crash it. And just the whole game would freeze. Just from the stats. <laughs> just break it all together. So, that was pretty funny. What do you get on your island runs? Oh god, I can't even remember. <laughs> Uh, that was way too long ago. <laughs> so yeah, so the only reason I remember is because they'll just because I used to call it Alakolossal and Deathsora for my sort of penultimate Alakazam. Alak Alakazam was Death like Sora. it was like pure evil in Gen One because in Gen One special had it was just special. There wasn't no special attack, special defense. It was yeah. all special. So if your special ever got lowered and you were versing Alakazam, you were screwed. Oh yeah. He just steamrolled the crap out of you. Hence, Alec Colossal. Did you hear they're going to release uh, yellow, red, and blue again? Yeah, they're doing a they're doing a digital re-release on um, the Nintendo eStore for 3DS. Nice. And it's the original games, like they're not updated graphics. It's the original '90s games. Nice. So, yeah. I also I also have a prediction for E3. Expect a new generation being announced. Yeah. I'd be... 20th anniversary, Gen 7. Yeah, I, I would be genuinely surprised if they don't. So, anyway, moving on to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, and spoilers! Oh, God. I don't think we really care that much about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so don't worry too much about spoilers. So, uh, for those who watched the end of... who watched the season, uh, the mid-season finale back whenever it was. I've forgotten when it was. November? Somewhere around December? there. December? Uh, Grant, uh, uh, Grant Ward got infected with something. Yeah. It's now been confirmed as to what it is. The... It is confirmed that Ward is now Hive. Hive? Really? Hive, <laughs> Hive as in from Arrow? No, 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 no. 
Not that hive. A hive is a genetic experiment created by Hydra, uh, modified to carry out the most important traits of the organization to a single being. Basically, who it takes over people, and it takes on the memories that it's killed. Oh. Now you think about how long Hydra's been around and how long that thing's been around. Oh yeah. This is going to be fun. And they let we'll him... oh, you go. And they let him near the team. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes. Anyway, moving and we'll keep it on the Marvel news for a bit. Uh, moving on to some Doctor Strange. Woo! And so there are and there's some uh, fan videos uh, being pulled out of filming Doctor Strange in London. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> so even though it's being shot in London, it's set in New York City. <laughs> I find that completely ironic and hilarious. So they're making it the easy way. Pretty much. So yeah. Any other news? Yeah, I got some Star Wars news. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. When is it their Star Wars news? <laughs> no, uh, this is about uh, this is about when the uh, Force Awakens DVD set actually. Yep. Uh, so uh, it's coming on Blu-ray, but this. Uh, details coming up. This is going to be a three-disc set. Oh. So what is going to be is that we've got um one one disc for the movie, obviously. Yep. There's supposedly one disc just full of behind-the-scenes bloopers, deleted scenes, all that stuff, like a whole disc for it. Which would be a lot of stuff. If that's the case. Nice. And we aren't sure what the third one is. There hasn't been anything official. We, all we know is that it's three discs, because um, on Amazon in America you can um, it has three discs, but there's no details on what the discs are. But obviously one will be the movie, and I'm not sure what the other two are yet. Nice. So yeah, that comes out in April, and the movie will go on iTunes in March. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll do a. When they're doing a three disc set here in America, what they'll do is one disc will be the movie on DVD with no special features. Then one disc will be the Blu-ray version of the movie, and then the third disc will, is usually a Blu-ray of special features. Yeah, as I said, there's nothing official out from Disney or Lucasfilm, so I'm not sure what it is yet. But just wanted to report on that. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes. I'm running out of news. Because <laughs> everything's like this. No <laughs> Obviously, there's just Deadpool news, but. <laughs> yeah, Deadpool news for days. So, anyway, let's. Um, you done with news? Uh, I think I've got everything major. Uh, so, let's move on for the last couple of minutes and talk about this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Kickstarter. Yes. Okay, so it's only got, what, two days, three days left. Yeah, three days left. It's raised $667,000, which means it's reached literally all of its stretch goals. Uh, there's one more stretch goal, which is 750k. Yeah. Uh, which probably will hit by then. Yeah. Which, um, so I'll go through all the different things. Yeah, cool. So, at... So obviously they wanted two hundred fifty thousand, so they got that at their stretch goals at two hundred sixty-five thousand. Um, the uh the figurines for the Thug Gunners, oh, um, they were um the uh detail of them, like the actual physical um stuff, were changed. So they were going to be punching there, and then they were changed to plastic. Nice. Uh, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Old Hob, uh, uh, villain joined the game. At three hundred thousand, Casey Jones joined the game. Yep. At three hundred ten thousand, another five uh, street 
uh, thugs will change from punch to plastic. Uh, and this is cool. This is one I kind of like um, the most, actually. Uh, 325,000 upgrade dice to four colors. So the, the, there's four dice, and now they're all the different Ninja Turtle colors. So yep. there's blue, orange, purple, and red. Yep. Uh, at 340,000, uh, six foot ninja upgrade to a foot elite. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest, he looks like the guy from Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, Korra. Like a bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what the guy's name was. I draw it a blank, like always. You mean Zuko? No, 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 no. Korra. The first oh, Korra bad guy, the guy that could sort of I haven't stop their abilities. Korra, so. Yeah. Can't I think what he's. Catch up on my Korra. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. At three hundred forty-eight thousand evil pizza, evil pizza tokens added to the game. <laughs> it's it's a pizza with like rotten food on it. And stuff. Oh yeah. Three hundred seventy all foot um, ninja foot. upgraded to foot bruises. Yep. Four hundred thousand Splinter Master Splinter joins the game, but only in the works edition. Yeah, only in the works edition. And the works edition is one hundred and fifty bucks, yep. minimum, US. So, or. Like two thousand Australian. The next one is the works edition gains the mouses. Um, the mouses. I love the mouses. I remember them from the bloody cartoons. Kind of want. I kind of want to. I kind of like a remote control mouse to take around supernova. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Um, to sort of bite some small child's hand off. Four hundred forty-five k is you have the. Uh, so the studio map mission and map. Yeah. Then you've got 451k, which is sort of random. Yeah, some of, the, some of the numbers are a tad strange. Yeah. Um, Eastern Lithograph added for the so works. They, yep. 460 is more mouses. Again, for the works. 480 is um, Save the Studio Campaign and Kevin Eastman Ally Card. That's up to all games. 500 is Ninja Turtle ally cards added to all games. 525. Bebop! Gets added to the Works Edition. Uh, 400 and, uh, 4100 backers. Um, all games get a variant comic. Um, Which I think is really cool. And the Works Edition gets an extra lithograph. The 550. Um, Four Eastman total sheets added. Six hundred thousand works Rock edition steady. gets rock steady. Six hundred twenty-five all games get mirage mission and rooftop rush maps. Six hundred sixty thousand all games get mirage campaign and fugitoid ally card. What the hell is fugitoid. that thing? I don't remember that thing. Uh, I'll. I don't have time to explain it. You really don't. Um, and the works edition gets a another lith lithograph and a portfolio case. Yep, seven hundred fifty thousand. Um, Bebop and Rocksteady Human Villain bundle added. So yeah, so that's it's looks really really good, really really yeah, interesting. Yeah, like, really looks. And there's so much stuff on that page. It's Kickstarter got. Dot, it's on Kickstarter. Look for. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past board game. Looks really, really good. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for us this week. Um, keep an eye on facebook.com slash save sci fi. As always, facebook.com slash save sci fi podcast for all podcast related stuff. Send us a message if you want to join in. We'll more than happily have you on. Um, if you're interested in helping out any of our supported projects, keep an eye on the Facebook page. We're sharing stuff about them all the time. Uh, and yeah, other than that, have fun. Bye, all. Bye, everyone. Bye. And the best part is I didn't have to cram my exit thing into, like, the last 10 seconds like I normally do. So, yeah. Um, on the Facebook page, just really quick before we go, so we're doing the last vote for the Ultimate Ground Force. So next week we'll be covering that. And next week we're also going to be doing a top five. Haven't worked out what top five yet. I might let Amy decide this time. Well, let's do it decide last time. So Amy, you have ten seconds to decide. Go. <laughs> um. Oh, God. I have no idea. <laughs> top five. I, top five characters that have no idea. 
I like it. <laughs> Actually, that's a lot of them. Oh, yeah. So. I'll find two characters. Uh, the cast of Twilight. Uh, the cast of Twilight. Uh, the cast.